With me is the exciting new HP Omen Transcend 14. We really like this laptop and we went a bit too nuts with our testing. So today we're going to give you a mega review and we'll let you know how it stacks up versus its competitors. And yes, that includes its primary one, the new Asus Ephirus G14. Both cost around the same amount for similar components. So which one should you buy? Let's start with CPU performance. Our Transcend model features the new Intel Core Ultra 7 processor, but you can also buy it with the Ultra 9 processor. Check out our website for the best pricing on both configurations. For CPU performance, we rank Geekbench, which tests a variety of common performance tasks. The Omen Transcend 14 performed better in multi-core than most of its competitors. This includes the new G14 with its AMD Ryzen CPU. It also outperformed the HP Spectre 14 and the ZenBook 14 which had the same Intel processor as this laptop. In Cinebench, which tests how the laptop performs when the CPU is maxed out, we found it performed better in multi-core than the other laptops of the same caliber. However, it doesn't come close to the MacBook Pro 14 with the M3 Pro chip in either test. While the CPU is maxed out, the laptop does get warm, comparable to the G14. However, the underside of this laptop is much cooler than that one. So if you plan to do something like coding while the laptop is on your lap, the Omen Transcend will be more comfortable. You'll also get a couple of decibels less fan noise on this laptop than the G14. If you do want even less fan noise and heat you feel, run the laptop in its default balance mode. The performance will drop quite a bit, but you will get substantially less fan noise and a cooler feeling laptop. The graphics performance of this laptop is underwhelming if you're comparing it with other 14-inch laptops with the same dedicated RTX 4060 GPU. This includes the G14, Blade 14, and Legion Slim 514. That's because this laptop's GPU is only fed up to 65 watts of power. The G14, for comparison, can feed its GPU up to 90 watts. This results in a time spy score of around 80% of those competing laptops, and our Cyberpunk tests match this. Keep in mind though, you will be able to use NVIDIA's excellent DLSS 3 for extra frames in games, but you will still have to dial back some settings in modern titles. The poorer gaming performance of this laptop isn't all negative. There is a benefit of what HP are doing by feeding the GPU less power. Fan noise when gaming was consistently less than the G14 and the Blade 14, significantly so when the laptops are run on their default performance modes. On that mode, the Transcend doesn't lose that much performance. And when it comes to heat you feel while gaming, the Transcend is much cooler to the touch than the G14. Now, you may be concerned that this laptop doesn't have a MUX switch. Don't be. The HDMI port on the back of this laptop connects directly with the dedicated GPU. We tested both the direct connection to the GPU and via Optimus. We saw no noticeable difference in performance. If you're wondering why modern gaming laptops no longer see a sizable benefit from using a MUX switch, then please watch Jared's excellent video on cross-adapter scanout technology. There is a reason for this. Link is in the description. In light use, like browsing the web or writing Word documents, this laptop was extremely snappy. Please note, if you have the laptop running in its default hybrid mode using Optimus, you will get some fan noise. The fans will audibly turn on and off at times. That being said, it isn't quite as disturbing as the G14, because that laptop has high-pitched fan noise, which is more noticeable. But if you disable the dedicated GPU and run integrated only, this laptop is very quiet in this use case and much quieter than the G14, so I'd strongly recommend running it like that. Unfortunately, you will need to restart the laptop to do so. And when it comes to the temperatures you'd feel, in light use, the Omen Transcend 14 is very cool to the touch. When running on battery, performance does drop a little, even on the performance mode. During our review, HP notified us that there is an issue with an incorrect BAR setting, resulting in poorer battery life. They sent us instructions on how to turn on SAGV, and that in the future, this setting will be on by default. Being the crazy people that we are here, we obviously ran both settings. To test battery life for performance tasks, which by the way I don't recommend you do as it degrades your battery, we ran Cinebench on a loop for 30 minutes. With SAGV turned on, we received a good score of 70% battery remaining. For a more realistic battery test, we played a Netflix movie on repeat over Wi-Fi for 4 hours. The screen was dimmed to 200 nits. We got 54% remaining with SAGV off and 67% with it on. This appears to be a phenomenal score for this use case, indicating around 8-12 to 12 hours of battery. But there is a massive issue. On this test, we always set the laptop to its best battery settings. On the Transcend specifically, there is a monstrous drop in performance when you set either HP's performance mode to Eco, or in Windows you set it to best power efficiency. The laptop becomes so slow it is completely unusable for anything other than watching a movie. And warning, if you have SAGV on and are running Windows best power efficiency mode, it's even worse. So. 
I would treat these results as overstated. Little note, you may notice that the display's refresh rate can be lowered to 24Hz for even longer battery life. We do not recommend running most applications like that as everything will just feel jolty, so all our battery tests were done at 60Hz. However, since most movies actually shot at 24 frames per second, if you're watching one, what you could do is run it at that setting for even longer battery life. Lastly, this laptop supports fast charging. According to HP, it can charge up to 50% of the battery in just 30 minutes. Now, we didn't test that exact use case, but we definitely noticed it charging very quickly. Next, the laptop looks very sleek and stylish, and the dark color is very fingerprint resistant. The keyboard's unique RGB backlighting really adds to the overall aesthetic. Each key has an RGB glow around it. This is a result of the transparent materials used around the edges of the keys. The keyboard backlight has four color zones. One is dedicated to the WASD keys so that they stand out. The laptop is compact and portable for a 14-inch one with this kind of hardware. However, it is heavier than the G14 and slightly larger. Parts of the build quality are very good. The bottom part of the chassis feels sturdy, the back panel is flush with the laptop, and the material used feels high quality. However, the keyboard deck and display lid do have a bit of flex to them. By comparison, the G14 is much sturdier. Also, the display hinge isn't the tightest. If you're using the laptop on a bumpy train, you may find the screen falls back a bit. The display is very nice. It's a 14-inch OLED panel that is bright enough at over 400 nits. It offers a fast 120Hz refresh rate, it is high resolution, and has a wide color gamut. Overall, content looks vivid and crisp. Even though the display is good, in a bright room you will see some reflections. That's because it has a very glossy coating. It's noticeably glossier and more reflective than the G14, and the laptop's brightness its just not enough to combat this. Also, the Transcend does not support G-Sync, which is weird as it is a variable refresh rate panel. In good news, neither the Transcend or the G14 suffer from the grainy screen door effect that we've noticed in some new laptops with OLED screens. The keyboard grows on you. When you first use it, it feels low travel, but after you use it for a while, you adapt. The key press has a nice clicky feel, and the keyboard almost has a standard layout. The reason I say almost is because the power button is where the delete key normally is. You may be concerned about miss hitting it, but you'll be pleased to know that you need to hold the power button down for some time for it to register. So, at least you won't accidentally shut down the laptop. That being said, the power button really should be somewhere else. Next, there is a large variance in the noise that the keys make when you press them. Some keys are very loud, particularly the backspace key, which is a pretty commonly used key. Other keys in the center of the keyboard just aren't as loud. Anyway, this laptop is marketed towards students, but because of this issue, using it in a class is going to draw some attention. Same goes for using this laptop in a meeting room at work. The trackpad is totally usable, but it's not the most enjoyable. It's equivalent to one you'd buy on a cheaper laptop. The surface is a little rough, so tracking just doesn't feel that smooth. And the click, it requires too much force. And like HP's recent Spectre line, the palm rejection is not great. There were several times when the cursor jumped unintentionally. HP needs to fix this. The laptop comes with one USB-C port on the left side that supports Thunderbolt 4 as well as a headphone mic combo jack. On the rear, you've got a USB-C port that supports 10 gigabit speeds as well as an HDMI 2.1 port that connects directly to the GPU. On the right side, you've got two USB-A ports that also support 10 gigabit speeds. This laptop is charged via a 140 watt USB-C charger. One thing we don't love about it is that it is extremely picky about what chargers and charging cables work with it. Only 100 watt or higher ones will work. 90% of the USB-C chargers in this studio did not work with this laptop. This should just not be the case. As long as you aren't using the dedicated graphics, a laptop with these components should be able to be charged with a standard 65 watt charger. This means that if you're a student and you want to borrow a friend's USB-C charger, chances are it won't work on this laptop. I did raise this with HP and they let me know that the laptop will charge with a lower wattage one when the laptop is in sleep mode, but that's not what we really want here. If you are looking at which charger to buy, take a look at the accessories that we recommend on our website. The speaker quality is actually not too bad, but the volume is noticeably quieter when compared to other laptops at this price point. And the speakers, they lack bass. The speakers on the Asus G14 and the MacBook Pro 14 are much louder. And the MacBook Pro 14 in particular has noticeably fuller and higher quality sound. That being said, I played a couple of rounds of the most toxic game ever, League of Legends, and the sound was totally fine for that purpose. 
Upgradeability is limited to just the SSD. If you want 32 gig of memory, it is available, but you will have to buy it at the time of purchase. The same goes for Wi-Fi 7, not all the configurations included. Here's how the webcam looks and sounds in excellent lighting conditions. It's really not that good. The picture looks very pixelated and the colors are off, particularly the skin tones. Also, the audio quality from the mic, it isn't good either. There is no privacy shutter for the webcam, so if you're taking a Zoom call while on the loo, you better be careful. There is also no fingerprint reader, but you do have Windows Hello facial recognition. It was so insanely fast, it left me wondering had it performed any verification at all. Since I believe this laptop is a great option for programmers, we tried Fedora 39 Linux Boot. The webcam, trackpad, keyboard and backlight all worked, but the Wi-Fi could not be detected. Also the screen's brightness could not be adjusted and the display was stuck at 1024 by 768. Unfortunately, we have found a lot of issues with running Linux out of the box on these new 2024 laptops. In a separate video, we do plan to investigate this further, so make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on for that. MSRP pricing for this laptop is around the same as the G14 at the time of this review. It's around $2,000 for a model with 32 gigs of memory and an RTX 4070. You can also get it configured with 16 gigs of memory and an RTX 4060 for $1,700. And this leads us to our conclusion. Although there are a bunch of niggling issues, overall, the Omen Transcend 14 is a very good laptop. But so is its primary competitor, the Asus Sapphirus G14. The G14 doesn't have as many issues as this laptop, and it has much better gaming performance, but it is held back by its heat and fan noise. It gets warmer to the touch in most use cases than the Transcend 14, and its fan noise is definitely more disturbing, particularly its high-pitched sound. Long story short, if your priority is getting the most frames in games or you can handle fan noise, buy the G14. If you prefer a more comfortable experience and are happy to sacrifice some gaming performance for it, buy the Transcend 14. Speaking personally, both Gabby and I would choose the Transcend over the G14 for that more comfortable experience. HP and Asus laptops regularly go on sale and our website is the place to find the best prices on them, as well as other laptops we recommend for different types of users. Link in the description. Make sure to smash the like button and get subscribed. Not only does it help this channel grow, which means that we can make more videos for you, but it makes our dearest mothers very proud. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.